In their sunless underwater world, submariners live on a different clock than the rest of us. We're in six hour rotations. Six hours of that's gonna be on watch. Uh, six hours of that's gonna be your training and your maintenance. And that leaves you about six hours to catch up everything else you wanna do. And then the day starts over again. The newest submariners, or non-quals, spend any available free time studying for their qualifications. From the first day you show up, you know, they give you a big stack of qual cards, and they say, you know, get qualified, get to work. A qual card is basically a list of different knowledge factors and practical factors that you have to perform. Each card must be signed by a superior. They want to know that you know everything, how to combat a fire, flooding, how to operate this valve, where to find this location at, because they know that when the chips are down, they depend on you. Once all his cards are signed, a non-qual has arrived. He earns his dolphins, initiation into the fraternity of submariners. That's a crew saying, I trust you to save my life. Non-quals have a year to learn a mind-boggling amount of highly technical information. Everything from nuclear propulsion to steering control, to the life support systems. Theoretically, Florida could stay underwater for years without ever coming to the surface, if they could somehow feed the crew for that long. We don't need any fuel. We produce our own fuel with the, with the nuclear reactor. We make our own oxygen. We clean our own air. A submerged submarine is in a constant life and death struggle with the sea itself. It begins with the very air they breathe. The problem on board USS Florida is that when you get 155 guys on board, you shut all the hatches, we got, you got, we're producing CO2, CO, and we're depleting our oxygen levels. And in this space right here, we were able to remove that. Sailors generate over two pounds of CO2, or carbon dioxide, per day, per person. That air is pumped into scrubbers, which separate the CO2 out and absorb it by blowing it across a chemical called monoethanolamine. Once isolated, it's then pumped overboard. But they still need to make more oxygen. Okay, these are our two oxygen generators on board. This one here is Mary Kate. She runs really good. We got uh, Ashley. She's kind of uh, temperamental at times. <laughs> now we make our oxygen at electrolysis. We split water molecules. Hydrogen and oxygen is produced. The hydrogen, we pump it overboard. Oxygen, we take it and we can distribute it throughout the ship, or we can pump it and supply it into two oxygen banks that we have. Carbon dioxide poisoning has plagued submariners since the early days, so crews are trained to recognize the warning signs headache, nausea, and in very high amounts, coma or even death. And death haunts them on every patrol.